In, in this video, we'll show you different elements that appear in a house. These are windows and different wall constructions. Which of the two weapons has the greater penetrating power? The bullet still went through. This is definitely life-threatening. Can that be it? Okay, we'll be right back. No! No! Fire. Hit. I'm super glad that my two favorite experts are back. They're here to shoot the walls. Servus, Thomas. Hi. Frank, servus. Good to see you. Hello. Frank has been a shooting trainer for well over 20 years, and Thomas is the owner of Schmeisser, who built these rifles. I asked both of them to bring guns that they thought would have the most success in penetrating our house elements. What did you bring? Yes, I have a semi-automatic shotgun with me. Uh, we will test different types of ammunition to see what kind of destruction is possible, and, uh, well, hopefully we'll be surprised. Okay, so you're betting on massive projectiles yes. with a lot of energy? Exactly. We'll start with buckshot, then we'll work our way up to shotgun shells, which simply have the greater destructive power, and then we will see how far we get here with the individual uh, elements. So, yes. Cool. Thomas, you brought something completely different. What principle are you betting on? So, I brought a Schmeisser M4, caliber 556 NATO or 223 Remington. I went for a small, fast bullet here. How fast is the bullet? About 850 meters a second. It's pretty fast. And you guys can be happy because we have another old veteran with us. Over 80 years old. Neither of the two gentlemen. Here he is. <laughs> Thank you. Karabina in caliber 8x, wait for it, 57. IP. Exactly. Infantry point. You heard it. 8x, 57 millimeters. IP. I'd say let's get started. Yep, let's go. Come on. What do you think? Which of the two weapons has the greater penetrating power? Thomas's or Frank's? I'll show you the ammunition. Looking forward to your comments. Right. right. Left. Left. Okay, let's have a look. Well, I think with a 5.6 it was already clear that the plaster drywall is not a big obstacle. Small bullet, uh, also a uh, small scrap. Come around with the camera. But you didn't expect anything else from Thomas. No, absolutely. That was clear to me. Yes, uh, that was clear. Here, small bullet, big effect. Hollow brick wall. Come around, here you can see the impact quite well. Yes, I can see that. So from the inside, the light shines through very well. Uh, the projectile was still hitting it, but there's nothing here anymore. Here, uh, the light shines. Um, here, shines no more light through. Uh, we first shot the frame here. This is a metal frame. Aluminium. You can see the speed of the bullet very well as the impact spreads outwards. And also from just behind here, uh, there is nothing to feel. No, nothing. Well, here's what happened with the window. The outer glass sheet breaks, it's supposed to. It's a single glass pane with the only purpose to act as insulating glass. The outer pane has a thermal insulation function. The safety package then comes behind it. You're welcome to come here with a camera. You see, the projectile was stopped relatively early, so the glass still has significant safety reserves, and there is no spoil on the backside. Let's take a look at what happened here. Yes, I think we'll definitely try it again with a, uh, with a larger rifle caliber. We still have a bit ahead of us, the shotgun for instance, but I think we need more energy. We can already foresee that okay, now. Okay, you can look forward to it. Frank, you start? I'll get started. So. I'll leave you to it.
Safety. What you are looking at here is a bullet containing 40 to 50 small pellets with a diameter of 2.4 millimeter. That was your first shot here? That was buckshot and what went through there was just the rest of the bullet uh, casing. So then you fired a second shot? Exactly, that was a shotgun slug hit. Look at this, it looks pretty brutal. You can get a little bit closer. It totally shredded the drywall. Yep, clean through. And that's the projectile? This is the bullet, this whole piece up here. This is the single bullet. The caliber here is 1276. And the bullet weight is 32 grams. Um, so 32 grams, uh, whilst um, we have uh, just 3.6 grams on the one Thomas uh, shot. For you guys at home, it's important to understand, Thomas has shot with a caliber 5.56 by 45 millimeters, and that corresponds to the resistant class BR5, according to the standards EN 1063. We've made another video about these standards. I've added the links in the description for you. Frank shot with a shotgun, and the second shot was with the slug ammunition and that corresponds to the resistant class SG-1 or SG-2. It's a clear shot through. Straight through and uh, there's even a lot of energy behind it. So whoever was behind it could have been harmed. This is definitely uh, life-threatening, that's for sure. What about the hollow brick wall? Yes, well, with the brick wall, uh, we will see how far this stick goes in and We've got a length that is half of what Thomas shot with the 223, with the 5.56 millimeter. And however, we have a much higher destruction, um, as you can see, because the bullet is, of course, also heavier and relatively fast on the way, uh, well over 400 meters per second. Okay, let's have a look at the window frame. Here we have a good understanding of what happens to a shotgun slug when it attempts to pierce a target. So here you can see the slug. Uh, we'll show you later what that looks like in its original state, but the shotgun slug we fired had a lot of elements splattered away on the side. So much of it will no longer be locatable. You actually shot very nicely exactly in between the frame and the glass. And that's usually the weak point. And it just didn't go through both times. Yes, the third shot then, I put it in the middle of the glass. That was this one? Yes, exactly. And now let's take a look at the backside of the glass. The glass is a bit more damaged than it was when Thomas fired the first shot with his gun, but it still didn't go through and there is no spall. The glass clearly still has safety reserves. Let's see what happened to the brick wall here. Yes, with this wall, uh, the projectile just disintegrated uh, the stone a little bit more and, and gave us a few more centimeters of depth than Thomas. Um, since his bullet was so light, it lost energy very quickly and as much made a, a smaller hole in the wall. The slug destroyed the brick a little bit more, but actually still no chance of getting through. Bullet went through. Bullet did not go through, not go through, not go through, with both weapons. And that's the danger point. I can see through it. I can see who's sitting behind it in the office or who's standing behind it. With walls, that's not really possible. Nevertheless, they're part of a building. Well, no penetration, but can that be it? Uh, uh, we want to look again, so I think we go back to the car, look in our goodie bag and meet again in three minutes. The two gentlemen have a big car and it fits lots of weapons. I'm curious to see what they come back with. Frank? NATO G3 rifle. NATO G3. Caliber 7.62 by 51 millimeters. Very powerful. A strong piercing ability. Ah, and this is what I thought. The veteran. Let's go. Very nice. Well, I think it's going to be intense. I just got the ammunition again. Thomas shoots caliber 8x57. 
Look here, for comparison, this is NATO G3 rifle, 7.62 by 51 millimeters. I think that the Karabina has an extremely high penetrating power, although it's 80 years old. Keep an eye on Thomas' shoulder, the rifle has a very strong recoil. I'm ready. So on the 308S, a multiple shot uh, at the same spot and still didn't result in a through shot. 308 is the NATO G3 rifle. Exactly. And 857? No bullet through. No penetration. I have to say, I would have expected that. And nothing happened to the glass. Uh, but the glass is also nothing. Come closer with the camera. As you can see, neither the carabiner nor the NATO G3 rifle managed to do much damage to the glass or the frame. Of course, you can see very well the energy that went in here, how it was absorbed by the glass. Here with a brick wall, also the bullet did not go through. Several shots were also targeted at the edge deliberately to see how the energy disperses and whether we would be able to disintegrate more bricks if they were not firmly connected to each other. So, your glass we have to test. Yes, yes, we still got something. <laughs> what else do you want to shoot now? <laughs> we'll be right back. No, no. We will be right back. Chris, come. Unfortunately, we have to torture your glass again. Well, I expected a lot, but well, yeah, that's impressive. 338 Magnum. Oh, hallelujah. Just under 6,000 joules. Uh, I'm curious. I think now there will be a few bullets through here. Yeah. Second row brick, the left brick, the dark one. Fire. Hit. Left brick, wall third row from the bottom, the second brick from the left. Fire. Hit. Left side down in the corner. Fire the frame. Fire. Glass down left. Clear. Clear. And? You can say... I don't want to look. You can come here, that's alright. Don't be ashamed. On the contrary. Yeah? The glass held. Incredible. It completely withstood everything. Yes, it has now. No splinters. For the first time we have a very small bump. We're talking about a very small bump for this caliber. That's not much at all. That's really impressive. Uh, for the glass. Unfortunately, we have reached our limit now. We unfortunately don't have a 50 caliber here. We're sorry about that. We apologize formally for not uh, bringing the biggest caliber with us. <laughs> Sounds like beers on me tonight. <laughs> yeah, if you look here. Thomas has caught both sides of the frame quite cleanly and the frame is indeed, as often with vehicles, the weak point. However, we have to keep in mind that this whole construction was not designed to withstand this caliber. I wouldn't have thought it would. I mean, you shot with a caliber 228. 338. Pardon. Uh, 338. La Pua Magnum. Yep. That is 8.6 70. by 70 millimeters. But that the glass holds, I find remarkable. Uh, that's super. Lots of respect for that. You guys really know what you're doing. Chris, you said earlier that the glass should actually hold. And I thought internally, this time, you will shoot through it. And I must say, congratulations. Really. Thank you. So, you do your job damn well. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thumbs up if you liked it. And see you next time. Bye bye for now. Take care.